Think about the universe for a second. We tend to imagine it like a giant machine. A machine with fixed rules. Gravity pulls things together. The speed of light is a hard limit. An electron always has the same charge. These are the laws of physics. They are the bedrock of reality. We assume they are constant. They were the same yesterday, and they will be the same tomorrow. They are the same here as they are in a galaxy, a billion light years away. But what if they're not? What if the fundamental rules of the universe, its very source code, can change over time? This isn't just a late night philosophical question. It's one of the most profound and unsettling questions in modern physics. And scientists have a specific target in mind when they ask it. They are looking at a single mysterious number. A number that, if it changes even slightly, would rewrite everything we know about reality. This number is called the fine structure constant. Physicists call it alpha. It's a pure number. It has no units, it's just there. The value is roughly 1 divided by 137, or more precisely, about 1 137.036. It doesn't seem like much, but this number is woven into the fabric of the universe at the deepest level. It controls the strength of one of the four fundamental forces, electromagnetism. Electromagnetism is the force that governs how light and matter interact. It's the reason you can see things. It's the reason atoms hold together. It dictates how electrons orbit the nucleus of an atom. It's responsible for all of chemistry. It's the force behind electricity and magnetism. It is, in a very real sense, the force that makes the world we experience possible. Alpha is the master volume knob for this force. If alpha were bigger, electromagnetism would be stronger. Electrons would be pulled much closer to the nucleus of an atom. In fact, if it were just a few percent larger, the electrostatic repulsion in the nucleus of a carbon atom would be too strong. The nucleus would fall apart. No carbon, no carbon-based life. Stars would also burn through their fuel much faster. The universe would be a very different and likely much more boring place. If alpha were smaller, electromagnetism would be weaker. Electrons would be held more loosely. Chemical bonds would be feeble and would break apart at lower temperatures. As molecules essential for life, like DNA, might not be stable. The universe would be a slushy, uninteresting soup. The fact that alpha has the value it does, this magical one, 137, seems incredibly lucky. It's a key part of what scientists call the fine-tuned universe problem. The basic constants of nature seem perfectly dialed in to allow for the existence of stars, planets, and people. Change any of them just a tiny bit, and the whole thing falls apart. For most of the history of physics, everyone just assumed alpha was a constant. It was a given, a brute fact of nature. Why would it change? The laws of physics are the laws of physics. They don't have good days and bad days, they just are. But some theories, the big ones trying to unite all the forces of nature into a single theory of everything, suggest something else. Theories like string theory, for example, often propose that the constants we see aren't truly fundamental. They might be the result of other deeper processes, maybe they are linked to the shape and size of extra hidden dimensions of space. If those extra dimensions were to change or evolve over cosmic time, then the constants we measure here in our four dimensions could change too. So we have a reason to wonder, is alpha really constant? This is a testable question. But how on earth do you test it? You can't just wait around for a billion years with a detector hoping to see it change. The change, if it exists, would be incredibly slow. The answer is to look back in time. And we have a way to do that. Um, we have time machines. They are called telescopes. When you look at a distant galaxy, you are not seeing it as it is today. You are seeing it as it was when the light left it. If a galaxy is a billion uh, light years away, you are seeing it as it was a billion years ago. The light from that galaxy is a postcard from the past. This postcard carries information. It carries a signature of the laws of physics from the time and place it was created. And we can read that signature. The key is something called an absorption spectrum. Imagine the brightest things in the universe. These are objects called quasars. A quasar is the intensely bright core of a very distant young galaxy powered by a supermassive black hole feasting on gas and dust. They are so bright we can see them from across the observable universe from more than 12 billion years in the past. The light from a quasar is a smooth, continuous rainbow of colors. But as this light travels across the cosmos for billions of years, it passes through vast ancient clouds of gas. Uh, the atoms in these gas clouds, uh, hydrogen, carbon, silicon, magnesium, do something specific. They absorb light, but only at very specific frequencies or colors. Think of it like a cosmic barcode. Each element has its own unique pattern of dark lines. It stamps onto the light that passes through it. 
When we point a powerful telescope at a quasar, we don't see a perfect rainbow. We see that rainbow with a series of dark lines carved out of it. By studying the pattern of these lines, we can tell exactly what elements are in that ancient gas cloud. This is the brilliant part. The exact spacing of those barcode lines depends directly on the strength of electromagnetism. It depends on alpha. If alpha were different in that ancient cloud, the electrons in the atoms would be in slightly different energy levels. They would absorb light at slightly different frequencies. The whole barcode pattern would be subtly stretched or squished. So, the plan is simple even if the execution is incredibly difficult. You find a distant quasar. You use a giant telescope and a very sensitive instrument called a spectrograph to capture its light. You find the absorption lines from a gas cloud in between. You measure the spacing of those lines with extreme precision. You compare that spacing to the spacing we measure for the same elements here in a lab on Earth today. If the spacing is identical, then alpha was the same back then as it is now. The laws of physics are constant. If the spacing is different, then alpha has changed. The source code of the universe is not fixed. In the late 1990s, a team of astronomers led by John Webb in Australia started doing exactly this. They used the Keck Telescope in Hawaii, one of the biggest and best in the world. Um, they spent years gathering data from dozens of quasars. It was painstaking work. The effect they were looking for was tiny, a change of just a few parts per million. That's like measuring the width of a human hair from a mile away. Everything had to be perfect. And then they found something. The results published around 1999 and updated in the years following suggested that Alpha was not the same in the past. They found that in the distant past, about 6 to 10 billion years ago, the fine structure constant was slightly smaller. The change was tiny, about one part in 100,000. But it was there. And it was statistically significant. It didn't look like a random error. This was a bombshell. It was the kind of discovery that could win a Nobel Prize. It suggested that one of the pillars of physics was wrong. The news spread through the physics community like a shockwave. Naturally, everyone was skeptical. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. The first suspect is always something called systematic error. This is the scientist's nightmare. Um, it means there's some subtle flaw in your equipment or your method that is fooling you. It's not a random mistake you can average out. It's a persistent hidden bias that pushes all your results in one direction. Maybe the spectrograph on the telescope was stretching the light in a way no one accounted for. Maybe the calibration of the instrument was off by a tiny temperature dependent amount. Maybe the different isotopes of an element absorb light in a slightly different way than the models predicted. The team in Australia checked everything. They rechecked everything. They tried to find a flaw in their own work. But the signal wouldn't go away. The evidence pointed toward a changing alpha. Other teams tried to replicate the result. For a while, the results were mixed. Some saw nothing. Some saw hints of a change but didn't have enough data to be sure. The scientific community was on the fence. It was an exciting idea, but the evidence wasn't quite solid enough to overthrow a century of physics. Then, the story got even weirder. The Australian team continued their work, but they also got access to a different telescope. This was the Very Large Telescope, or VLT, located in Chile. The VLT is in the Southern Hemisphere. The Keck Telescope is in the Northern Hemisphere. This means they look at completely different patches of the sky. They pointed the VLT at quasars in a new direction. They expected to either confirm their old result player that Alpha was smaller in the past eight, or find that their old result was a fluke and that Alpha was constant after all. They found neither. The new data from the VLT, looking in a different direction in space, told a completely different story. In this new direction, the fine structure constant seemed to be slightly larger in the past. This was stunning. It was a direct contradiction of their first result. For a while, it seemed like the whole idea might just be a mess of errors. Maybe one telescope was calibrated one way, and the other was calibrated a different way, and the two errors just happened to be in opposite directions. Um, that was the easy answer, the boring answer, uh, but the team led by John Webb and Julian King looked at the data more closely. They combined the old data from Keck with the new data from the VLT, and a strange pattern emerged. It wasn't random. The change in alpha seemed to depend on which direction you looked in the sky. If you looked in one direction toward the constellation Ara, alpha seemed to get bigger the further back in time you looked. If you looked in the opposite direction, it seemed to get smaller. If you looked at a right angle to this axis, you saw no change at all. The universe, it seemed, had a preferred direction. The value of the fine structure constant was not uniform. It formed what physicists call a dipole. It's like the universe has a north and a south pole, but not for magnetism, for the value of alpha. 
This is, if true, even more profound than just having alpha change with time. One of the most fundamental assumptions in cosmology is the cosmological principle. It says that the universe, on large scales, is the same everywhere and in every direction. It is isotropic, there are no special places or special directions. A universe with a dipole in one of its fundamental constants would violate that principle in a huge way. It would mean there is a special axis running through the cosmos. This alpha dipole is where the research stands today. It's a tentative, deeply strange, and highly controversial result. Many physicists are still betting that it will turn out to be a subtle, unaccounted for systematic error. It's just too weird to be true. It would mean that not only is the universe's source code changing, but it's changing differently depending on where you are. The laws of physics would not be universal, but the team behind the claim has continued to find more evidence. They have analyzed more quasars, they have refined their techniques, and the dipole signal they claim is still there. In fact, they say the statistical significance is now very high, so is there any other way to check this? Looking at quasars isn't the only tool we have, there's another completely independent piece of evidence. It comes from deep underground in a uranium mine in Gabon, Africa. It's a place called Oklo. In the 1970s, scientists discovered something amazing there. About two billion years ago, a natural chain reaction started in a rich seam of uranium ore. A pocket of the Earth's crust became a naturally occurring nuclear fission reactor. It ran on and off for a few hundred thousand years, generating heat like a modern nuclear power plant. This fossil reactor is a gift to physicists. The physics of a nuclear reactor is extremely sensitive to the laws of nature. Uh, the rates of certain nuclear reactions depend very strongly on the strength of both the strong nuclear force and the electromagnetic force. By analyzing the leftover waste products from the Oklo reactor, the specific isotopes of elements like samarium and gadolinium left behind, scientists can calculate what the laws of physics must have been like two billion years ago for those reactions to happen the way they did. And what do the results from Oklo say? They say that the fine structure constant two billion years ago was exactly the same as it is today to an extremely high precision. There was no change. This is a powerful counter-argument. It's a completely different method from a different time period two billion years ago versus the six to 12 billion years ago for the quasars, and it shows nothing. How can we square these two results? Well, maybe the constant changed a lot in the very early universe and then settled down by the time the Oklo reactor turned on. Or maybe the dipole is real and Earth just happens to be in a part of the universe where the change was minimal two billion years ago. Or the most likely option for many, maybe the quasar measurements are just wrong and Oklo is telling the truth. There is a third way to look for a change, and this one tests what is happening right now. We can use atomic clocks. Atomic clocks are the most precise timekeeping devices ever created. They work by locking onto the frequency of a specific atomic transition, the ticking of an atom. But here's the trick. You can build atomic clocks using different kinds of atoms like cesium, aluminum, or iterbium. The ticking rate of these different clocks depends on the fine structure constant in slightly different ways. If alpha were to change, even by a tiny amount, the clocks would start to tick at different rates. An aluminum clock, for example, would run slightly faster or slower compared to a cesium clock. So, scientists run these clocks side by side for years. They compare them with mind-boggling precision. They are looking for any drift between them. A tiny, steady drift would be the smoking gun for a changing alpha in our modern era. And what have they found? So far, nothing. The best atomic clock experiments show that if alpha is changing today, it's changing by less than one part in a quintillion per year. That's an almost unimaginably small number. This result seems to argue against a changing constant. But it doesn't kill the idea entirely. The, the quasar results are looking at changes over billions of years. The atomic clock results are looking at changes over a few years. It's possible that the rate of change itself has changed. Perhaps alpha changed more rapidly in the early universe and has now slowed to a crawl. The universe might be settling down. So where does that leave us? We are left with a deep and fascinating puzzle. Um, on one hand, we have the quasar data. This is our only direct window into the laws of physics in the deep past across vast stretches of the cosmos. And this data from two different world-class telescopes hints at something incredible that the fine structure constant changes over time and is different in different directions. It points to a universe that is stranger and less uniform than we ever imagined. On the other hand, we have strong constraints from the Oklo natural reactor and modern atomic clocks. 
These are local measurements, one from 2 billion years ago on Earth, and one from today on Earth. Both of these show no change at all. They suggest that the bedrock of physics is stable and unchanging, just as we've always assumed. The community is divided. Most physicists remain deeply skeptical of the quasar results. The bar for overturning a fundamental principle of science is, and should be, extraordinarily high. The most likely answer is still that there is some subtle, undiscovered error in the way the quasar light is being analyzed. The universe is a messy place, and making measurements that precise across billions of light years is fraught with peril. But the team behind the discovery is persistent. They continue to gather more data and refine their analysis. They are waiting for new instruments like the extremely large telescope currently being built in Chile. With a much bigger mirror and more advanced spectrographs, we will be able to repeat these measurements with far greater precision. Uh, these new telescopes could either kill the dipole idea for good, or confirm it beyond any reasonable doubt. Uh, let's just imagine for a moment that they are right. What would it actually mean if alpha changes? First, it would mean that Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity is not the final word on gravity. A key part of his theory is the equivalence principle, which states that the outcome of any local non-gravitational experiment is independent of where and when in the universe it is performed. A change in alpha would violate this principle. The outcome of a simple chemistry experiment would depend on when and where you did it. This would crack the foundations of modern physics. Second, it would be the first real experimental evidence for theories like string theory. These theories have been criticized for decades for being purely mathematical with no testable predictions. But many versions of string theory naturally predict that the constants of nature should vary. Finding a varying alpha would be a monumental victory for these ideas. It could give us a clue about the existence of extra dimensions and the ultimate structure of reality. Finally, it would change our entire philosophical picture of the universe. We tend to think of the laws of nature as transcendent, existing outside of time and space. They are the fixed rulebook by which the cosmic game is played, but a changing alpha would suggest that the laws themselves are part of the game. They are not fixed, they evolve. The universe would no longer be a static machine, ticking along according to eternal rules. It would be a more organic, dynamic entity. The source code itself would be evolving. And it would raise a whole new set of questions. Why is it changing? What is driving the change? Will it continue to change in the future? What will the universe look like in a trillion years if its fundamental constants are different? Right now, we don't have the answer. We have a tantalizing, controversial hint from the edges of the visible universe. We have conflicting, more robust evidence from closer to home. We are stuck in a state of scientific tension. And that's a good place to be. It's where the exciting discoveries happen. The question of whether the universe's source code is changing remains open. It's a detective story being played out on a cosmic scale. The clues are faint signals of light that have been traveling for longer than the Earth has existed. The suspects are the very foundations of our understanding of reality, and the verdict is not yet in. But the fact that we can even ask this question and devise ways to test it is a remarkable thing. It shows us that science isn't about having all the answers. It's about being brave enough to question the things we think we know for sure. Even the constants.